I told you, this thing is bigger than Nino Brown, and I gotta listen. Order. If I'm going down, I'm taking court. a whole lot of people with me. Order in the court. Nino Brown Boxing, I'm back in the building. Shout out to the LDBC. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. So, I was reading the article on Boxing Scene where Earl Spence gave his opinion on the Sean Porter Ugas fight that took place earlier this year. And Earl Spence said he just as easily could have saw himself in a position to face Ugas this Saturday as he can easily see himself facing Sean Porter. Now, Earl Spence gave his take on the fight, and his take was basically he was surprised that Sean Porter um, attempted to outbox the skillful Ugas, and even though he turned more aggressive later on um, in the fight. Now, he also said in the interview, like, he wouldn't have been surprised if the fight ended with a draw or the fight would have went to Ugas. And he also believes that Maybe if Sean Porter would have kept his conventional style and stayed aggressive, Sean would have, um, he probably would have lost the fight. Now, with that being said, I'm happy that Earl Spence is speaking out on Sean Porter's last fight. It's definitely something that the PB on, PBC on Fox show, they didn't really focus on too much, but they did focus on Earl Spence's last fight. I look at it like it's only fair to discuss Sean Porter's last fight in detail if you're going to discuss Errol Spence's last fight in detail. I say that because me personally, I watched the fight. I watched it when it first happened, watched it live, and then I watched it again, and then I watched it again. I watched the fight a total of three times, and in watching that fight three times, each time I was even more convinced that, um, that Sean Porter lost the fight to Ugas. And more importantly, the knockdown that wasn't counted. It's like each time I was so focused on the punch that landed on Sean Porter from Ugas and just the short time span from when Sean Porter touched the canvas, even though the ref called it a slip, it was definitely a punch. And just based off of that alone, just going back and looking at the scorecards that the judges had, um, it said Max DeLuca and Steve Morrow had it. Well, Max DeLuca had it 115-113, and the Steve Morrow guy had it 116-112 for Sean Porter. Now, if that um knockdown would have been counted, Sean Porter would have lost that fight. He definitely would have lost that fight because Another judge, it says, one judge, Zachary Taylor, scored 9 of 12 rounds for the Cuban-born Ugas, who won 117-111 on Teller's card. Now, if we flip, you know, if that knockdown would have counted, it would have been 115-113. One, um, 118-110 on um, Taylor's card. And then still on uh, Steve Morrow's card, Sean Porter would have been up. And that would have been a split decision for Ugas. So, honestly, I feel I feel like Ugas was robbed of that opportunity. But ultimately, we are we are um, where we are right now. And I'm sure Earl Spence is well aware of it. Earl Spence feels that Sean Porter is going to try to be more aggressive with him in their fight this upcoming Saturday instead of trying to outbox him. If Sean Porter and Kenny Porter have any ounce of boxing knowledge in their brains and i'm sure they do matter of fact i know for an absolute fact that they do they're not going to try to outbox earl spence jr i'm sure they're they've been aware of earl spence's abilities his boxing abilities since his amateur days but if they needed any more proof that decisive victory over uh, mikey garcia was definitely all the proof that they needed to know that the game plan to um, outbox Earl Spence is definitely not the way that you want to go. With that being said, I mean, I still anticipate an extremely exciting fight, but it was very enlightening to hear um, Earl Spence speak on that Ugas fight because me personally, I look at that fight as that's a fight that Sean Porter lost. And to me, just Sean Porter lost to Kell Brook, Sean Porter lost to Keith Thurman, Sean Porter lost to... In my opinion, he lost to Ugas, but officially he won that fight. I can pull 
abilities that all three of those guys have in common and put them in Earl Spence. But the thing about this is Earl Spence is still, in my eyes, a better fighter. I feel like Keith Thurman, you know, for his power, isn't um, as devastating a puncher when it comes to elite opponents. Ugas is a very strong, like physically strong fighter um, that has a great body attack. And then Carol Brook is an offensive technical fighter that has a lot of ability. And I feel like if you combine all that together, that's Earl Spence. But Earl Spence also has a level of relentless of relentlessness that these guys don't have. Earl Spence has um, a different gear that those guys don't have. And to me, mixing all of that up, it's a recipe for disaster for Sean Porter. And just it just makes me even more comfortable with my pick of picking Earl Spence to get this victory on Saturday. So thanks, Earl Spence. For giving your take on it Like I said I mean bare minimum That fight against Ugas Should have been a draw Bare minimum Bare minimum It should have been a draw But It is what it is Sean Porter got the victory He'll be facing Earl Spence This Saturday And just the fact that Earl Spence Spoke on that I know Earl Spence Has watched that fight I know him and Derek James Have studied that footage And Hey, man, it's, a, it's definitely a breath of fresh air. I, I'll, now I wish the next interview I hear from Errol Spence is just an in-depth interview regarding Sean Porter and Kill Brook and the fact that Errol Spence had to go over to the U.K. to handle um, the dirty work that Sean Porter didn't want to finish or he couldn't finish, whatever the Porter decide to use as an excuse. It is what it is. But unification bout, fr- I mean, unification bout on Saturday night. I'm picking Earl Spence. It's Nina Brown Boxing. Shout out to the LDBC. And I'm out.